Hi there. Welcome back to my shop. Thank you for stopping in. My wife went out recently and bought this bright air odor eliminator. It's supposed to freshen the air in your room. So she wants to have something to put that into a little nicer than this. So she asked me to come up with something. I think it's time I made something segmented. It's been a while. So I hope you'll stick around and see what I come up with. And I'm going to call it a potpourri container because if you get tired of this, you can always put potpourri in something. So let's go see what I come up with. I have a glue block on my spindle. It's a shop made glue block. And now I want to bring this first segmented ring up. Now I have this ring mounted in my coal jaws. And the coal jaws are on this adapter, which goes to my one-way live center. So I'm able to spin it on this end in the chuck. Now, I'll bring this up a little tighter. Just check, this looks like it's very well centered. I'll just tighten this up real good. And then I'm going to bring in my hot glue gun and run hot glue all around this joint. All right, now if you have followed my videos before, you'll already know that I'm a big fan of hot glue. So I'm going to let that cool and then I will be back. All right, I will just turn this flat and I'll be back. The only place I really need this to be flat is out here where the next ring is going to be glued on. This area in here is going to be taken out when I make the space for the floating disc that's going to go in here. And that's going to be my next move. First I'm going to make that floating disc. I have a circle drawn here, four inch circle. So this should fit just fine in there. Actually, it's a little under that so I can sneak up on this. So I will start cleaning this out to this one quarter inch depth. This is Baltic birch plywood and of course it's pretty thin veneer on here. So I don't want to have to sand on this at all. Thank you. 
Okay, I've got a mark one quarter of an inch from here. That will be plenty shelf for this to sit on. Let me just draw this circle. All right, now I'm going to use Cindy Drozd's tool to take this right down to the glue block. If this floating disc was a piece of hardwood, as I usually use, I would worry about making sure that I got the glue just a spot on the end grain. The purpose would be to keep this from expanding and cracking this ring. However, because this is plywood, I'm not worried about that, but I'm still going to stay with my habit and just put a small dab of glue on opposite sides here I will put this in and I will let that set up and I'll be back I used the cone from my one-way live center set to put pressure on there and now I believe it should be ready for me to put on the next ring All right, I'm going to add this one more ring, and then I'm going to turn the inside just to make sure I'm not too far away to do a decent job without turning this right around to where the floating disc is glued in. And I'll be back. I have mentioned in the past that I really like Cindy Drozda. I like her work, I like her instructions, and I like her signature tools. And this is one of her signature tools. This one she calls the straight side flat bottom box tool. Now I'll bet you can figure out just from the name what this is for. So I'm going to use this to take this down to the top of this ring that's just on top of the floating disc. I don't want to go down past that bottom ring here because this floating disc is only four inches in diameter and I don't want to get too close to that. I would like to just take this down to three and five eighths. But let's just get down to there and see how that's going to work. Now when I'm putting this in there, I am looking along the shaft and lining it up parallel 
to the bedways. All right, that's plenty big enough. This box tool comes down to a point here, a 90 degree corner, and on the other side has a radius. So I'm going to use that side now, go down a little bit further and create a radius in that corner. That's very nice. You may be already aware of the fact that I've been working with laser engravers recently and quite enjoying it. And one of the great things about it is that if I need a circle, like I do in this particular instant, at exactly three and five eighths of an inch, I can cut it very accurately with that laser engraver. I used to use a bandsaw and could never get even close. So this is a great thing to have. Now I'm just going to use my skew chisel to try to clean that out there without destroying that floating disc. All right, I think that is looking pretty good. Now let's see what the base of this would look like in there. I think that should be all right. I have all the rings put on now. Although I'm not sure if I like the plain maple ring on the top or if I want to put a segmented ring on there. Still need to decide that. But in the meantime, here I am starting to clean out the inside. All right, the mouth of this is fitting this jar just fine, but it's not going in very far, which tells me it's not a very straight cut. So I'm going to put this straight edge along the wall. And holy cow, I think that overhead camera will probably show this is not parallel to this. It should be over here. So I need to start close here and then start taking it off all the way down.
Well, that is better than it was, but I think I still have a little way to go, so I'm sure you're getting bored watching it. I'll be back when I get this straightened out. All right, it's time to do some sanding here now. I've got this down to one eighth of an inch thick. I think that's plenty thin enough. Now to sand the inside, I can reach in here. I've got long fingers. I can get down there to the bottom holding this strip of sandpaper. If that's not working well enough, I have a dowel with a slot in it and I have some sandpaper through that and that will spin in this direction as this spins this way. So that should take that off very well. For the outside, I'm just going to take half sheets of sandpaper and go right across here like this. I have it sanded to 320 grit and I'm very pleased with it. It came out very nice. Now I'm going to put on sanding sealer and what I'm using is Zinser Seal Coat. And I'm just going to turn this on, run it at 100 RPM to spread it. And after this I will use shellac. This Zinser Seal Coat is shellac based. I'll probably put on two coats of this. I'm not attempting to do the very bottom. That's plywood and I'm not worried about it too much. So I'll put this on, let it dry for about an hour, and then I'll put on a second coat. And I'll be back when I'm going to put the shellac on. Now I'm going to put on two coats of this shellac. After the sanding sealer, I sanded this very lightly with 1000 grit and it is very nice and smooth. I put two coats of shellac on there and it's feeling and looking good but I'm going to see if I can improve it using Axe pastes and I'll start with Axe abrasive sanding paste. Oh, that has really improved it. I can only imagine how much the polish restoring paste is going to improve that.
<laughs> to say that I'm pleased with that would be a huge understatement. All right, time to remove this from the glue block. This is denatured alcohol. I've used it many times before. It helps to loosen the hot glue and things can be taken apart that way very easily. So I'm just going to soak this very well with this denatured alcohol. I'll let it sit for a few minutes and I'll be back to remove it. Well, that was much more difficult than usual. Now, is it going to, there we go. Man, that was really holding on. Usually it comes off much more easily than that. Anyway, time to reverse this. Take this bottom piece off. I have it in my coal jaws in compression mode. If I put these buttons inside this piece as thin as it is, and tried it in expansion mode, I think I would likely break this. And that would probably make me pout for a few hours. So I've got it in there, I've got it set at 500 RPM, and it is running very true. I couldn't expect it to be much better than that. So now I'm going to bring my live center up with the cone, just to make sure it doesn't fly out of these buttons. I'm not putting on there very tight and I'm going to turn this at 750 RPM and just start to take this part of the ring off. All right, that's looking good. Now I'm just gonna use the parting tool to take it off right to the end of the finished part. Having thought about it for a second, I believe I can do a better job just using my bowl gouge. Well, I wasn't expecting the mark from this. <laughs> I'm going to have to see how I can get rid of it or embellish it. But now I want to drill for my logo coin. Careful sanding took care of that nicely. I'm using Starbond medium glue as I always do when I'm putting my logo coin in. It's time for lunch. I'll leave this sit for a while. Okay, well, it's finished and I'm very pleased with it. I knew I have not showed it to my wife yet, and we'll see what she has to say. I don't think I mentioned the kinds of wood that I used. 
the different species. All the lightwood is maple. Down here in these three rings is wenge. These are all walnut. And up here on the top ring, it's maple and sapile. I think they came out all right. And this fits in here. The lid goes on just like you'd want it to. And I'm feeling a little pompous about this lid. I designed this myself in Lightburn, the software that I use to run the engraver. And I'm very pleased with that. Again, we'll see what the boss has to say. Anyway, I hope you like this. If you did, I hope you'll click the like button. And if you didn't, click the dislike button, but let me know why. Also, if you haven't subscribed before, I'd appreciate it if you do. I really appreciate all my subscribers. So thank you very much to those who are already subscribed. And if you would share this with others, I'd really appreciate that too. So again, thank you for stopping in today. I hope you'll come back next time. Between now and then, have a great day in your shop and be safe. Bye-bye now.